Sports in high definition from the station on your side. This is Wavy News 10. Police say a drunk driver hit a man and three children in the front yard of a Virginia Beach home. They were on their way to meet the school bus. Three of the victims were in the hospital. A five-year-old is in critical condition. And police took 43-year-old Sandra Hofstadler into custody. Shortly after the accident at Chester and Paladin Drive, that's off South Rosemont Road, and after the crews took the victims of the hospital, we see this chilling scene. Clothes, shoes, book bags strewn across the front yard. Then on your side's Andy Fox and Stephanie Harris have been following this story since this morning. We're going to start things off with Andy and the story of how this all happened. Andy? Yeah, Tom, it's just unbelievable. We hear about it all the time. When the stop sign is out on the school bus, you stop. But what happened was there was a school bus about right there and they were loaded for some unknown reason. Sandra Hofstadler goes around the bus. This is what police say. She comes up here. She comes onto the lawn right here, David Yancey's lawn. He's out here with three family members. And then all of a sudden, she runs them over. Her pickup ends up right over there. And eyewitnesses pick up our story from there. Signs of children on their way to school. A father taking them to the bus stop. Celia Ruiz was putting her daughter on bus 545, the stop sign out, the lights flashing, when everyone's life changed on Chester Street. By the time I turned around, the blue pickup was right there where it's at. Did you see the blue pickup coming around the bus? I saw her coming around like this, hitting the boom. That's when I turn around, I look up, I see people up in the air, and I see her finally stopping right here. Ruiz does not want to be seen, but her words tell us what she did next. The first person I checked was the little boy start CPR and just kept doing CPR on him until the fire truck got here and they took over. Ruiz and other witnesses say this woman was driving the blue pickup truck. Ruiz's husband grabs the key out of her car. Her and him get into like a, some type of scuffle because he reaches in and takes the keys. At that point the woman, police say is 43 year old Sandra Hofstadler, waits for police to question her and then she is handcuffed and put in the police car. She is charged with DUI second offense and maiming as a result of DUI. Two witnesses claim she told police she was taking Adderall and Xanax. She's jumping all over the place. I don't pay her too much mind because I know the kids, so I run to the children first. Nobody's unconscious. Everybody's out. Everybody's out. Now, coming up tonight on Wavy News 10 at 5.30, an eyewitness account of what happened when Ms. Yancey returned home and found out what had happened to her family. And then at 6, a family member speaks out and tells us what the day's been like for the Yancey family. The fine line between life and death. That story at 6. In, New, in Virginia Beach, Andy Fox, 10 on your side. Now, there were children on that school bus who may have seen a classmate get hit and may be scared to go back to the bus stop tomorrow. Ten of your side, Stephanie Harris went to Lynn Haven Elementary to find out how the school is handling it and how parents can address the accident at home. Stephanie? Yeah, Nicole, we know from parents that at least a couple of children went home early because they were so upset. One mom showed me some pictures that she took at the scene and said that she's worried about how her own seven-year-old will react. So we ask an expert what she and other parents should do. It's hard for any parent to see a child strapped to a stretcher, but especially for the mom who took these pictures. I have a seven-year-old and that very well could have been my son. Her son had already left for school when police say someone swerved around a stopped bus and hit four people. My kid goes to school with him. It's not clear exactly how much the children on the bus saw. A school administrator told us the bus driver took them to Lynn Haven Elementary and the children went on to their classrooms. Really the goal was to make sure that instruction continued, that we took care of any issues, but we kept it as calm and as low key as possible. Dr. Jean Crocker said inside a crisis team made up of school psychologists and counselors talked to children who looked upset or indicated they saw something. I like the idea that they brought a crisis team to the school. But counselor Gary Rotfuss would advise doing more. I just think it's always better to get these things out in the open because they know something happened. Because it's something that affects the whole school. It's a crisis for everybody who works there and for the whole student body. Rothfuss says it's important now for parents to address it and choose your words carefully. The worst thing you can say is to tell a child don't worry and to say it's not going to happen to you. 
because it did happen to somebody. It happened to a classmate. He suggests reassuring them that you, the school, and police are doing all you can to make it as safe as possible. Stay calm, but don't hide your concerns or fears. This scares me. It makes me want to drive my kids to school. Doing that or standing with your child at the bus stop for a few days may help. Rotfuss says the more a child saw, the longer it will likely take to come to grips. Just try to get them back to a normal routine as soon as possible. And I'm told that the school made an effort to notify all the parents of the children on that school bus and that crisis counselors will be at the school for as long as they are needed. Stephanie Harris, 10 on your side. 10 on your side has continuing coverage of the story tonight at 530 and 6. At 530, hear what happened when the children's mother arrived on the scene after the accident. Then at 6, video of the driver's arrest. You'll hear from the man who shot the video. And this is a tough time for the local Navy community as they mourn the loss of an officer. There are a lot of questions in this week's death of 28-year-old Navy Lieutenant Thomas Falk. And in your sides, Melanie Woodrow spoke with neighbors and his family. Melanie, what are they saying? Tom, the family is trying to make sense of the senseless death. His father tells me that Thomas was in peak physical shape. How he died while exercising on base is now under investigation. Navy officials say 28-year-old Thomas Folk collapsed during a supervised physical training course here at Joint Amphibious Base Little Creek, Fort Story. Folk died at the hospital Tuesday afternoon. Navy medics initially treated him on the scene. Off camera, the Navy lieutenant's father said Thomas was physically fit and was a runner since middle school. That's why it was such a shock. That, uh, you know, something like this happened. And Neighbor John Linkus has been comforting Thomas's father and brother. I was really looking forward to having them as neighbors. They're really nice people. Falk was a Navy Information Warfare Officer supporting the special warfare community. Neighbor David Logan was shocked to learn of his passing. Every day on this earth you got to take uh, as this, you know, not your last, but just make it precious. As his family prepares his final arrangements, the investigation into folks' death is just beginning. I just can't imagine what the family's going through. I just can't imagine that. So all my prayers, my family prayers go out to them. Captain Brad Treadway, who's commander of Naval Special Warfare Group 10, released the following statement. He said, quote, we are deeply saddened and shocked by the sudden loss of a great teammate like Thomas. He went on to say we will do everything that we can to support Thomas's family and our grieving service members during this period of mourning. Melanie Woodrow, 10 on your side. One more thing. Folk was a native of St. Louis and was commissioned in the U.S. Navy in May of 2006. Virginia Beach police say a teacher went too far when he spanked a female student with a belt. Now Michael Shanklin is in jail without bond, charged with abduction and sexual abuse of a minor. Investigators say Shanklin and the student stayed after school at Lanstown High for a tutoring session yesterday. Shanklin is a math teacher at Lanstown. Tonight he's on administrative leave without pay, pending the outcome of the case. The fight over proposed sulfur plant in Hampton Roads is over. Potash is no longer considering the former Portsmouth Marine Terminal. The company's general manager sent this letter to Portsmouth Mayor Kenny Wright. It says, quote, for a variety of reasons, including the initial feedback from the community, we have decided to eliminate Portsmouth as one of the options we are considering, end quote. The company heard the concerns of residents during a community meeting Tuesday night. A local elderly couple robbed in their own home. Hear from the victims new tonight on Wavy News 10 at 530. And on the fast track, Amtrak's service from Norfolk to our nation's capitals ahead of schedule. We'll show you the route and the jobs it could create. But first, several big developments in the race for the White House. One candidate is out, and new numbers show a new winner in Iowa. The latest from the Republican campaign trail straight ahead. So cloud cover off to the west is going to move in overnight. Uh, as far as the day tomorrow and into the weekend, we've got more changes. We'll have those for you in just a few minutes. And then there were four. Texas Governor Rick Perry has dropped out of the GOP run for the White House. And a new poll result show Rick Santorum may have actually won the Iowa caucus, not Mitt Romney. Then on your side, Steve Handelsman has today's news in Decision 2012. Rick Perry said the Republican mission is to beat Barack Morning. Obama and to replace him with a true conservative. I am suspending my campaign and endorsing Newt Gingrich for President of the United States. I believe Newt is a conservative visionary who can transform our country. Gingrich is surging in South Carolina. 
10 points behind Mitt Romney in today's NBC News Marist poll. Ron Paul at 16, Rick Santorum at 14. But in polling since Monday's debate, Gingrich trails Romney by just five. The only effective conservative vote on Saturday is for Newt Gingrich. Romney praised Perry. Perry, terrific guy, terrific conservative, been a great governor, was great in the race. But he slammed Gingrich. The speaker was talking about all the jobs that he helped create in the Reagan years. He'd been in Congress two years when Reagan came to office. Romney got more bad news from Iowa, where he'd claimed his first 2012 win. Officials there say today a new count puts Santorum ahead. And there's more potentially damaging financial news about Romney. He sent some of his millions to the Cayman Islands. But aides deny Romney used the secretive banks there to dodge U.S. taxes. Gingrich got bad news in this religious state. A reminder of his three marriages and infidelity from his second wife on ABC. Oh, he was asking to have an open marriage, and I refused. No. No. That is not a marriage. Campaigning with his current wife, Callista, Gingrich said intruding into 10-year-old family matters is wrong. Tonight, the four remaining candidates debate again here in South Carolina, and it's shaping up as a Gingrich-Romney slugfest. From Columbia... I'm Steve Handelsman for 10 on your side. Click on the politics tab on wavy.com. That will take you to On Politics powered by 10 on your side. There you'll find the latest in presidential, state, and local elections. Rescue crews are back searching for survivors at that craft Italian cruise liner. Tonight we have new video from above and below the surface. But first, avoiding highway headaches to Richmond. Amtrak is running ahead of schedule on its new route. What 10 on your side learned today about what's on track. You're watching Wavy News 10 at 5 with Tom Shad, Nicole Libus, and Super Doppler 10 Chief Meteorologist Don Slater. We'll talk about the fast track. That's where Amtrak's Norfolk to Richmond run is headed some 10 months ahead of schedule. Governor Bob McDonald says that service will begin by December. Ten on your side's Ava Hurdles live at Harbor Park with more on this new route. Ava? Tom, already construction has started on a new platform right here near the tracks. Catching Amtrak from Norfolk now means a bus ride or a drive to its station in Newport News. But come the end of the year, rail passenger service will come to Norfolk, and Dave Carrick likes that. No, you have to make it convenient. I mean, if it was down here in Norfolk, I'd do it. But going all the way over to Newport News, I live down in Chesapeake, so that would kind of defeat the purpose of it. Might as well drive on up to Richmond if you're driving to Newport News. Amtrak Virginia, as it's named, will run one train a day from Norfolk with its first stop two hours later in Richmond. That's according to the state's rail and transportation director, Thelma Drake. She talked with us by telephone. We'll start from Norfolk at 5 a.m. We'll go um, through Richmond all the way up the route into D.C., into New York City as far north as Boston. We don't have the fares yet. Amtrak continues to work on that. This is an artist rendering of the new Norfolk Rail Station that's going up near Harbor Park and will allow passengers to connect with the tide. Already construction has started on the platform. It will bring jobs to the area. Um, first of all, Norfolk Southern has done the construction, so there has been construction jobs that have taken place. And then, of course, Amtrak will... Um, They'll, be, they'll come through Amtrak as to additional jobs. The Transportation Board voted to add close to $12 billion into the $100 billion project for infrastructure improvements along the route. Drake says she's gotten positive response from people excited about the Norfolk service and riding the train. I would indeed. I'd take it to points beyond. I'm looking forward to it. Again, Amtrak is still working out those fares at this time. We're live in Norfolk, Ava Hurdle, 10 on your side. And a postscript here. This would be the first intercity passenger rail service from Norfolk since 1977. The North Carolina Department of Transportation is holding another meeting tonight about a possible toll hike on some of the state ferry routes. NCDOT is considering raising the rate on three ferry routes and 
adding tolls on two others. The proposed toll rate includes the Southport Fort Fisher Ferry, the Swan Quarter Ocracoke Ferry, and the Cedar Island Ocracoke routes. There's a proposed toll for the Bayview, Aurora, and Cherry Branch, Minnesota Beach routes. Tonight's meeting starts at 7 at Beaufort Community College in Washington, North Carolina. Now, in high definition, your Super Doppler 10 forecast with Chief Meteorologist Don Slater. A little cool today. It'll be a little cool tomorrow, then some big changes again for the weekend. Good night. That's no. Uh, here's a look at what's going on with our forecast. We've got clouds moving in uh, right now, and those clouds will overspread the area during the evening hours. But there's not much else in terms of any rainfall with that. Uh, certainly not snowfall either. Those clouds are moving in, and they're really encircling us right now. And that'll continue to move in overnight. Now, with the cloud cover, uh, that tends to act like a blanket and hold temperatures up during the overnight hours. So it'll drop pretty rapidly during the evening hours, uh, and then and hold steady once the clouds start to move in a little bit more. 10 to 15 mile an hour winds at 9 and at 2 o'clock in the morning. And then temperatures actually rise a little bit and then hold steady into dawn. Starting the day for tomorrow, uh, some sunshine and some sunshine at the noon hour. A northerly wind at 10 to 15. And at the end of the day, a lot of cloud cover and there's that rain off to the west. Now, we're looking for the weekend, uh, and on Saturday, we are going to see some rain, but it's not likely to be a washout whatsoever. Here's where things are Friday night at midnight. Some scattered light rain into, uh, uh, starting to move in, and you can see even a little bit of a mixture of rain, sleet, and snow into northern Virginia and off toward the mountains. We move on through into the daylight hours, and most of that rain is gone, and most of the day looks to be rain-free. I think we'll see some rain in the morning, and then we'll see it again later in the day. 15, 20 mile an hour winds. We could see a break or two in the cloud cover. Now, the forecast models differ on this front a little bit. There are other forecast models that have a ride on down into here by 7 o'clock in the evening, and then that would put the rain right on in over the top of us uh, during the uh, evening hours, the early evening hours, or really even by the dinner hour. Uh, so, again, a little bit of wiggle room as to exactly where that rain is going to be by 7 o'clock in the evening. It could be right on in over the top of our area. Uh, and again, uh, that would be at the end of the day coming up on Saturday. So a little rain at the first part of the day, more rain either in the evening or more toward the dinner hour uh, coming up on Saturday. But right now, though, beautiful looking out there, a little cool. Uh, and as I mentioned, before the clouds really, really get socked in with us, we'll see our temperatures drop pretty rapidly. And they've been down during the day today, 44 generally during the afternoon. Here's where we are for Newport News, 44 as of 4 o'clock. But it's dropped down to 41 uh, Newport News. 42 in Norfolk, 38 already at the beach. Our low last night in Norfolk, 34, but we did drop on down into the mid-20s into a few inland areas, but temperatures mostly into the low to mid-40s right now. And overnight, we'll drop on down not as cold as we did last night. 25 to 34 was our, uh, were our lows last night. Tonight, it's likely to be uh, around 37, 38 for most. A little bit cooler, low 30s inland. But I think for most of the Hampton Road cities into the upper 30s, upper 40s, for tomorrow, an increase in afternoon cloud cover. Here's what things are for Saturday. Again, it's not going to be a washout, so don't think that it is. It'll be warm, 62. See some rain at either end of the day. Slight chance of rain coming up. Uh, very light rain. Definitely cooler on Sunday. Warmer on Monday with late day rain. Video just released of that cruise ship disaster shows what rescuers are up against. You'll also hear what happened just before the crash. If you had an extra million dollars, how would you spend it? A Maryland man is using his extra cash to help fix the Washington Monument. A progress report on the repair work tonight at 5.30. Divers resumed the search for 21 people still missing after a cruise ship capsized off the coast of Italy. The search was stopped yesterday after the cruise liner shifted on the rocks, but it stabilized today. Eleven people are confirmed dead after the Costa Concordia ran aground Friday night. The ship remains half submerged at sea. Italian rescue authorities released this footage from inside the capsized cruise liner. You can see what rescuers are facing there, cold, dark water filled with debris. Crews say they've searched all of the unsubmerged portions of the ship and are now focusing their attention to areas underwater. This is a unique view of the cruise ship disaster. These satellite images of the Costa Concordia were taken on Tuesday. 
Port officials say 30 minutes before the crash, the captain told port officials the ship suffered a blackout. That's when panicked passengers ran to the dining room to get life jackets. Captain Francesco Scatino told prosecutors he did not abandon ship. He simply tripped and fell into a lifeboat. He's now under house arrest. A young Moldovan woman who was aboard the ship is defending the captain, saying he saved the lives of thousands. Prosecutors say he could be charged with manslaughter, causing a shipwreck and abandoning his ship. A new home for Atlantis. The retired shuttle is one step closer to completing its final journey. Coming up, you'll get a look at that new site. And another Facebook facelift. In addition to like, you can now buy read and want <laughs> more things on your profile page tonight at 5 30. okay can you see me okay Okay, I, I want to. I want to show you. I want to show you exactly what happened. The bus stopped right here. Check, 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 and McNamara Mike, check, 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 check. Hey. I'm near the truck if that's what you hear something weird. Yes, I can. Check, 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 and McNamara Mike, check. You too. No, no, you actually, you actually talk about them. Uh, hold on, hold on. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, definitely. NASA broke ground on a new permanent home for the Space Shuttle Atlantis. Ladies and gentlemen, we present the future home of Atlantis. Yes, some pomp and circumstance here because there's a lot of history. The $100 million facility is part of the Kennedy Space Center's plan to enhance its visitors complex on the space coast of Florida. Atlantis will appear to be on a permanent mission displayed against the backdrop of stars and planets with an astronaut at work on a robot arm. Uh, young men and women will come here with their parents and they'll look up and, like I said, wide-eyed wonder at, uh, at this tremendous achievement that we had. I expect to see tears of joy seeing this amazing vehicle up close. Gasp of wonder from the vast accomplishments of the space shuttle program. Space shuttles will also be displayed in Washington, New York, Los Angeles, and yes, where it all began, in Brevard County, Florida. Stay with us. Wavy News Senate 530 starts right now.